AP Biology, Mendel and Genetics, Chapter 14, Part 1. Learning goal is to be able to predict the genotypes and phenotypes in a monohybrid and dihybrid cross. Our success criteria is given a genetic problem, determine the frequencies for the offspring's genotype and phenotype. Now this is a fairly long chapter. Um, from now on, what I'm going to do is put the bold italicized for AP Biology only. For the stuff that is not italicized in bold, that's only for Honors Biology. If you're in AP Biology, you have to know everything as far as these focus questions. For Honors Biology, only the stuff that's not boldface. These questions will be at the end of the presentation as well. At that time, pause the presentation so that you can try to answer these questions. You may know that you look like your mom and dad. Family resemblance can be pretty striking. But how does that work? Chapter 14 is a discussion of how genetics works and how offspring get their traits from their parents. Gregor Mendel is considered the father of modern genetics. He was a monk in the mid-1800s and he did some experiments with pea plants and figured out the rules of genetics using pea plants. He got lucky. The pea plants have fairly simple genetics, uh, nothing too complicated with them, and um, it was using pea plants that he discovered things like dominant and recessive traits and how offspring get their traits. He used the experimental method and quantitative analysis. He actually counted stuff. Before then, people didn't really, people knew that you got your traits from your parents, but they didn't really know how it worked. They weren't very systematic in their approach. Gregor Mendel is the first person to use a systematic approach to trying to figure out how genetics works. Mendel's work. Mendel uh, bred pea plants while he was in the monastery in the garden and he was crossing different types of traits in pea plants together and trying to observe what happened to the offspring. He took the pollen from the, the parts of the flower that produced the pollen, the male parts, and then he put the male parts, the pollen, onto the female parts of another flower. Basically he was doing with a paintbrush what bees do in nature, transferring the male sex cells from one flower to the female parts of another flower. That's how plants spread their gametes. Remember that plants and animals both do meiosis. We're both sexually reproducing creatures. However, plants have both male and female parts typically in the flower. That we'll talk about again in the uh, fourth quarter. The parents are represented by the letter P, and you'll see this over and over again. Then the offspring that are produced, basically we're going to make some pods with seeds inside. Those are the children. And when you plant them, you have the F1 generation, the offspring. You can breed the F1 generation, or the offspring, of the parents together, and that will make more offspring, which would be called the F2 generation. You can kind of think of it as the F2 generation being the grandchildren, the F1 being the children, and the P being the parents. However, we're talking about plants, not people. Mendel collected data for seven P traits, things like purple and white flowers, whether it was um, an axial uh, flower, which is toward the middle, or terminal toward the top. We have yellow peas and green peas, round peas, wrinkled peas, um, all kinds of different traits he was playing around with. So what did Mendel do? Mendel crossed true breeding purple flower peas. True breeding basically means that whenever you cross it with itself, a purple with a purple, all you're gonna make is purple flowers. Now, as we're going to find out, just because you have a purple flower doesn't mean you're only going to produce purple flowers in the offspring. True breeding white uh, flower peas only produce white flowers. So he took true breeding purple flower peas, crossed it with true breeding white flower peas, and in the F1 generation, the offspring, all of the flowers are purple. Now, that's kind of interesting, don't you think? We have purple and white. However, it's only purple seen in the offspring of that, of that cross. It gets even stranger. When you cross the two purple together, the offspring of the F1 generation, then you get three-fourths of the offspring, approximately, becoming purple flower, and then one-fourth becoming white. So it's almost like the white flower trait skipped the generation, and that was something that was interesting to Mendel, and he discovered how that works. So what did Mendel's finding mean? Well, traits come in alternative versions. We can either have purple flowers or white flowers. These different versions of a trait are called alleles. They're located on the same area of the chromosome. 
However, the DNA sequence might be slightly different. If the purple flower trait is one allele, its DNA sequence will be slightly different from the white flower allele located on a different chromosome. Remember that we're diploid. We have two sets of chromosomes, and that's true for flowers as well. We have two genes for every trait. The different versions of those traits are called alleles. At this time, we're going to take some notes. Go ahead and pause the podcast at this time and copy down the notes from the computer. Okay, moving up the paper. This is a summary of one of Mendel's experiments with these, not the only experiment. Mendel crossed purple flowers with white flowers and got 100% purple flowers. He let them self-pollinate, basically taking the pollen from the same plant and giving it to the, the eggs of the same plant in the middle of the flower. And they produced three-fourths purple, 75%, and 25% white, a three-to-one ratio, or three purple flowers for every one white flower. The white flowers skipped a generation. Ah, that was the question that he was trying to answer. Pause at this time to copy down this picture. If you have colored pencils, that'll make it a little bit more easy to, to visualize. Traits are inherited as discrete units. For each different trait, an organism inherits two alleles, one from each parent. Diploid organisms inherit one set of chromosomes from each parent, which are one of each of the homologous chromosomes that you have for the 23 pairs of chromosomes in a human. It's almost like having two sets of an encyclopedia. Think of it as having two copies for every type of trait that you can imagine. Encyclopedia Britannica, if you look up, let's say, dogs, you'll be able to read one description of what they think a dog is. And then in Encyclopedia Americana, you can also look up dogs. It's going to have the same information. However, it might be slightly different because it's published by a different publisher. You can think of the alleles or the genes on these two different chromosomes as different versions of the same trait. So what did Mendel's findings mean? Well, some traits mask others, they hide others. The purple and white flower colors are separate traits that do not blend. We're gonna talk about traits that blend in a future class, but not right now. Purple and white didn't make light purple. The purple masked or hid the white. So how does that work? Well, we have a dominant allele. A dominant allele is a, a version of a trait, let's say it's flower color, that will always be expressed over another version of a trait. So if you have the dominant allele, you will see it in the offspring. We're going to talk about human dominant alleles in a future class, just to give you one right now. If you have dangly earlobes, that's a dominant trait over the earlobes that kind of go right into the side of the head. For pea plants, purple flowers are dominant over white flowers. So if the offspring get one purple allele and one white allele, the purple is seen, but the white allele is not seen. A recessive allele has no noticeable effect if the dominant allele is present. However, if there's no dominant allele, then you will see the recessive allele. For example, if you have two of the white allele for flower color, then you see white flowers. But if one of the alleles is purple, then the flower will appear purple and the white is hidden because it's recessive. Genotype and phenotype. This is difference between how an organism looks and its gen genetics. Remember that you can hide traits. A description of the organism's trait is called a phenotype. You can kind of think of phenotype and physical appearance. They both start with a pH. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean just outward physical appearance. We could have things like hemoglobin, a protein carried in your red blood cell, also having a, um, a physical trait. However, for now, let's just focus on stuff that we can see. A description of an organism's genetic makeup is called a genotype, usually represented by two letters. Remember, we have two of every chromosome, so we have two of every gene. All right, at this time, we're going to go back to our notes. The 
This is page two of your notes. Traits are physical characteristics that can come in alternative versions. For example, purple and white flower color. Remember you have homologous chromosomes, two of every chromosome, 23 pairs total, and we've seen this on a karyotype. Located on the chromosome is a sequence of DNA called the gene. The different versions of a gene are called alleles. We have one allele on this uh, plant for white flowers. Now this is just an example. You could have two purple alleles, you can have two white alleles, but in this case we got one white, one purple. Remember a locus is the location on a chromosome where a gene is found. The allele for white flower colors is going to be found in one chromosome here, and then we have the allele for purple flowers on a different chromosome. Now I colored this in in purple. The chromosome itself is not actually going to be purple. Pause at this time to copy down this picture. All right. So alleles are different versions of a gene for the same trait. Two alleles for flower colored peas are purple and white. And there's other alleles that we can talk about as well. Remember, a gene is a sequence of DNA on the chromosome that codes for a protein that makes a trait. Alleles are different versions of the same gene. Each organism inherits two alleles for every trait, one from each parent. You get one allele from mom, one allele from dad. For example, you can get one allele for blonde hair from mom and one allele for brown hair from dad. You'll have both the blonde and brown allele, but since brown is dominant over blonde, the kid will probably have brown hair. Remember, it's like having two editions of an encyclopedia. Go ahead and pause now and copy this down. We're now on page three of our notes. Some traits mask others, and we talked about this in the presentation. The dominant allele, if present, will be expressed. It will be shown, seen in the offspring. For example, purple flowers will be seen if it's present in one of the two uh, chromosomes that the plant contains. Recessive alleles are not seen if the dominant allele is present. It's kind of hidden. It's only expressed if there's no dominant allele. I abbreviated dominant here. This may code for a non-functional protein. You only need to know that if you're in AP Biology. For example, and go ahead and pause if you don't have the top. Example, we have the purple allele, the white allele. Only purple flowers seen because purple is dominant to the white. The white is hidden. Genotype versus phenotype. Remember, a phenotype is a description of the physical traits. Remember, pH, pH. You might want to underline that. For example, purple flowers. A genotype is a description of the organism's genes. Remember, you have two of every gene. For example, we have big P, big P, two of the dominant alleles, one located on each chromosome. Big P, little p, an allele for uh, dominant and recessive traits, or two recessive alleles, one on each chromosome. These represent the alleles on two homologous chromosomes. Go ahead and pause at this time and copy these down. Making crosses. We use representative letters. The letters aren't actually found on the chromosomes. We just use the letters to represent a sequence of DNA that will make a trait. We use big letters, capital letters, for dominant traits, and we use lowercase letters for recessive traits. For something that's true breeding, we'll use two of the same letter. Big P, big P would represent two of the dominant alleles, and if you cross that with itself, you're only going to make offspring that have big uh, P's in it, or purple flowers. True breeding, white flower peas will be little p, little p, which means if you cross it with itself, the offspring are only going to be able to get the lowercase p or the white flower allele. Here we have the cross. The little x here means that you've uh, basically made the flowers have sex and passed on gametes from the male to the female. Now, which one's male and which one's female is not important. The cells produced by meiosis happens the same way for males and females. Here we have a purple plant that's a phenotype crossed with a white plant and that white is also a phenotype. The genotype for this purple flower is big P, big P. The genotype for the white flower is little p, little p. These will cross together to make big P, little p. At this time, we're going to start page four of our notes. Pause the podcast at this time and copy down this information.
let's pause again and write this down. This ends part one of chapter 14, Mental and Genetics.